If you haven't dealt with your flesh and mastered yourself, he gave him not money, he gave him not a crown. When you know you shall be everybody knows in time of those people you are about to impose. There are most of our ladies, the reason why they give it to all kinds of foolish people, they are under pressure. Rest, not jumping into things you haven't thought through. Think, plan, act. That's boldness. So if you're a man who is looking for a wife, boldness is not just a, a seeing a lady in the streets and say, I will marry you. And people say, he's bold, oh, he's bold. He just saw the lady and said, I will marry you. That is not boldness. That is very close to foolishness. It's not foolishness fully, but close to it. It's heading towards that. Because before you tell a woman that you want to marry her, considering that you're going to live the rest of your life with this person, that you're going to produce children with this person, that you're going to build a family budget with this person, they're going to make investments with the advice, they're going to raise children with character based on the home that all of you will build, you have to be thinking you can't just meet somebody in the street and say, I love you the way you are. The, I see the way you walk. I love you. I want to marry you. That's not boldness, my friend. Young man, you are heading in the other direction. <laughs> Foolishness is getting close to you. And of course, the ladies, the same way. Boldness doesn't mean eh, just seeing men and running after them. That's not boldness. That is also close to the other direction. It's foolishness. Boldness doesn't mean that just act without thinking. Boldness requires that we take strong actions, but they come from thinking and planning and acting. It's a risk, but it's educated, it's calculated, it's thought through. The pros and cons have been weighed, and now we take a bold step to make it happen. So, when I talk about boldness, these are not what I, I, we are talking about. Bullying and threatening others, boasting, being loud mouth, acting without thought or wisdom. That's not the boldness we are talking about. So what boldness are we talking about? If you're a young man, you are in love, you see the love of your life, a young lady, you're just out of university, you were for three, four years, but it's as if you are still in secondary school, salary-wise. Salary is not good. The lady, too, her salary is not good. You are in love. You want to marry. But Ghana tells you economy is bad. And if you are not careful, you reduce the relationship to a guilty relationship where you are there, and today you are having sex here, Today you are fornicating there and you feel guilty and you feel bad. You are with a girl and then she gets pregnant and you say, we well, haven't married her. Go and remove the pregnancy. And you are complicating your whole life, your future children. You are throwing them away. But you love the lady. You love the lady. Marry! He that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. You already have favor. Marry! But pastor, we are broke. Who told you broke is an enemy of marriage? One shall put away a thousand. Two shall put away ten thousand. Your marriage makes you stronger, better, bolder, richer, more equipped, wiser, smarter. So you don't have the money. But the marriage is what will give you the money. So that when you are making one foolish decision, you can tell on the bed and say, honey, this is what I want to do. What do you think? Say, ah, honey, this one is foolish, oh. Then you, so you're becoming wiser. It takes boldness to say, God has given me the love of my life. 
I'm not going to mistreat her. I'm not going to start this relationship on guilt, on shame. I want to start this relationship in dignity, in honor. When I was married, my wife would tell you, I didn't have anything. Didn't have a bed, didn't have chair, didn't have cutlery, didn't have plate. You tell him. We married, the first furniture for our room was benches, discarded benches from the church. Those days we didn't use to sit on nice chairs, benches. And I improved them by painting them white. I have always been a man of improvement, of excellence. I say it's a bench, but let's apply excellence here. Paint it white. And that's what we had in our sitting room, if you call that a sitting room. Benches. But we were together. We prayed together. We believed together. Then we moved from benches. If you are waiting to be rich before you marry, your head is not working. All of you young men and ladies, your head is not working. You don't want to marry, but you are sleeping together. You don't want to marry, but you are sleeping together. What is reserved for marriage? You want it, but you don't want the process. Your head, your head is hurting you. It's paining you. Be bold. Marry. Set the date. If you are afraid of veil, don't veil. If you are afraid of gown, don't gown. If you are afraid of, of wedding cake, don't cake. Just come to the church office. This is the woman I want, this is the man I want. Do you, do you, I do, I do. Go. That's how it's done. Then from there you start together in agreement, praying together, thinking together, planning together, acting together. And you would see that the battles you are fighting now become easier. One gets down, the other pulls him back. The one is down, the other pulls him back. And step by step, step by step, step by step, step by step. That's how your parents got to where they are. For all the young men and women, this message is for you. Be bold. Parents, tell your sons, be bold. Tell your daughters, be bold. You have stayed here for so long. Be bold and move out. Be bold. It's, life is never going to be easy at any point. But when you come into agreement and you are purposeful, you boldly do things. And you will be able to turn your life around, acquire property 30 years from now, 40 years from now. You will see how far God has brought you. But this dragging the feet, dragging the feet, drag, you want to wait till you are 55. When you are now going to pension and now you have a large two-bedroom house, that's when you want to marry. By the time you are 70, your children are going to write wasi. <laughs> we'll be praying for them on Sunday morning. Let's pray for all those who are going to write wasi. <laughs> you are 70, your children are writing wasi. Somebody say, I'll be bold. Say, I'll be bold based on the righteousness of God. And if God says I can do it, I can do it. Let's pray.
Father, you are our backbone. You are our source. You are the one we lean on. When the waves are strong, we rest in you. <coughs> when life is difficult, we rest in you. You have never given an assignment that you didn't provide for. And whatever you tell us to do, you have already made provision for it in our future. So based on who you are, we take life with boldness. We seize the opportunities. We seize the moment. And I pray, Father, for your children that no one will be held back because of lack, because of what they don't have. But their eyes will be turned on your immeasurable provision, your boundless grace, your gifts without limitation, that we can boldly step out and do great things for you in our lives, in our families, as teams, wherever we are. Help us, Lord, to do bold things for you. In Jesus' name, amen.